What most people don't understand about health insurance is not insurance, right? It's actually a prepaid health plan. You're prepaying for a range of services that the average person would expect to use. But because you're Mike Mutzel and because you do uh, high intensity health, you know, you pretty much have like almost a 0% chance of getting type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. Your chances of getting, you know, uh, an, an autoimmune disease where there's a ton of expense is also much lower. Yeah. And so you're a much better risk than just the average human. And and so, you know, what we see is that you're prepaying essentially for drugs and services that it's really unlikely that you will use. Now, in America for the last six years, if you look at what is the ACA, what is Obamacare, it was really forcing people to buy this commercial insurance from one of six vendors, right? And right. you've seen those six vendors for all their huffing and puffing, you know, have had a 10x increase in their share price. It's been like a, a great, great moment for them because yeah. the law forced everyone to buy health insurance. Hey friends, welcome back to another video. I'm with my friend James Masco here. Today we're gonna to talk all about health insurance and how you can save money while improving your family's health. So James, it's great, great to, to be, be with you, buddy. Man. Yeah. It's been a good weekend. You can see the, the bus in the back. I'm yeah. actually at Mike's house. Mike's house is just over there. So we've been here for the weekend checking out uh, the Pacific Northwest, beautiful place to be. Yeah, what do you think? I love it. Yeah, yeah, we had good weather. I came here in July. I guess that's a good time to come. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, thanks for your hospitality. It's been good to it's hang It's been out. awesome. Yeah, it's been really good. I mean, let's talk a little bit about the van and the impetus of like why you're here and wh where you're going in the next four months. Yeah, so for the last four and a half years, we've built this uh, network of doctors doing functional integrated medicine through the Functional Forum, which is yeah. a show that I started. And, you know, the beginning, it was just in New York. And then we started taking it around the country. And, you know, all these communities, we have more than 500 communities communities around the world of doctors, sometimes it's two or three, sometimes it's like 100 or 200, mm -hmm. and they're always saying, hey, come to Asheville, come to Charlotte, come to uh, Seattle. And it was only once a month, we couldn't really come, so I was just, why don't we just get in a bus and go city to city to meet these practitioners and, and also be able to travel with my family, yeah. you know? Such kids, a great idea. We have kids the same age. So that was the genesis of the idea, and that was in about last, uh, last uh, what was it, last, I think November we came up with it. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we've been working on this project called New Health, which was really about how do we how do we scale up functional medicine, right? right. How do we make it available to everyone? Because there's not really enough doctors. And honestly, you know, the doctors who are doing functional medicine, a lot of times they're doing jobs that they shouldn't be doing. Like if you can have, for the, for the lifestyle um, execution, you know, you can see that, you know, a health coach could be, could be valuable. And we've been helping doctors and health coaches to work together. And so that was sort of like where we were at the end of last year. And then, you know, as the year went along and, and things changed, the law changed and other things came along, um, it opened up a whole new opportunity and so we're really psyched about uh, where we're going next. Yeah, that's amazing. So uh, for someone like myself, right, family of three, fairly healthy, I'm paying over $900 a month for insurance yeah. and we've been paying that, we've never used it. <laughs> yeah. And I've been paying cash out of pocket for my own labs and all that. So really, I mean, the cost is really, uh, so what are we paying for? Why is insurance so expensive and how is your model different? Yeah, so I guess, yeah, so, what you don't understand, what most people don't understand about health insurance is not insurance, right? It's actually a prepaid health plan. You're prepaying for a range of services that the average person would expect to use. But because you're Mike Mutzel and because you do uh, high intensity health, you know, you pretty much have like almost a 0% chance of getting type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. Your chances of getting, you know, uh, an, an autoimmune disease where there's a ton of expense is also much lower. Yeah. And so you're a much better risk than just the average human. Human. And so, you know, what we see is that you're prepaying essentially for drugs and services that it's really unlikely that you will use. Mm -hmm. Now, in America for the last six years, if you look at what is the ACA, what is Obamacare, it was really forcing people to buy this commercial insurance from one of six vendors, right? And right. you've seen those six vendors for all their huffing and puffing, you know, have had a 10x increase in their share price. It's been like a, a great great moment for them because yeah. the law forced everyone to buy health insurance. And so in our model, what we, what I've seen over the last few years, and, and maybe some of your members are familiar, is the mm. rise of these things called Christian health cost sharing ministries, right? Mm. It's a, such an American thing, and but it's, it's taken off because um, it's way cheaper 
and it's very, very similar to insurance in its structure. Like you pay in a certain amount every month, and if you get hit by a car, they pay the bill. You know, so it's similar, but there's there are things that separate it from insurance that make it make it different. Now, I've been part of one of these for the last few years, mm. and it's been great. So I've saved like for myself because I live in LA and I lived in New York before. Unlike your 900, mine's more like 1500. Oh my gosh, right? It's so crazy. 1500. And again, like I don't use those services. Yeah. I go to a chiropractor. I would choose to go to a functional medicine doctor if I needed it. Mm -hmm. My wife has gone to a functional medicine doctor. I, we touch wood, have not used it either. Um, but ultimately we use that because that was saving me around $1,000 a month. Mm -hmm. So like $12,000 a year is being opened up to spend on the services that I value to maintain health. Yeah. So I'd done that for the last few years and I'd seen that you know, some of these Christian ministries, they actually serve a million people in America, right? Wow. So some people haven't heard of it, but it's its big and it's growing. And it's way cheaper than health insurance because you're not prepaying for drugs, mm -hmm. right? You're not prepaying for the services that people who decide to be healthy are unlikely to use, right? Yeah. You've got the same chance of getting in a car accident as, but, anyone, else, yeah. as anyone else. But 86, this is, a, this is the most important fact to know. 86% yeah. of costs are driven not from accidents, but from like life, lifetime dependence dependence on medication, mm. right? And if you're not gonna take that medication, I don't think it makes sense for everyone to pay the same. And also I don't think it makes sense as far as the incentives, right? We don't have the incentives for people to get healthy. Yeah. In any other industry, when, they, when people want behavior change, they incentivize it. And in healthcare, it's just gone the opposite direction. So mm. actually, you're incentivized to use your plan the most. Who gets the most value out of their health plan? The people that's at the doctor every day, yeah. right? So, so we've set up this weird incentive system. So ultimately what happened is, you know, last year we were really focused on scaling up functional medicine, using health coaches first, you know, having a network of doctors in every state. And then on January 2nd, you know, the Trump passed the tax law and there was a lot of implications for that. Some great, some not so great, mainly not so great. But one of the things that came out of that was that the tax penalty for not having health insurance, the thing that had forced everyone to having health insurance went away. Hmm. And just because I'm a weird guy who's spent my life like understanding this exact world, I was like, this is our moment, yeah. right? This is the moment. If there was any community that should be forging the future of healthcare, it should be the high intensity health community. Mm -hmm. Because the, your viewers are, if they're following what you're sharing, are you know setting an example for health, are recovering from chronic diseases, are preventing chronic diseases. And so I was like, if we could get all these communities together and build our own health cost sharing, you know, where we share in the cost of a community, I think that would be a power move. And I've always thought that since we, you know, we did something a couple of years ago in that direction. And when the law changed, I was like, we're doing it. And we had already awesome. planned to do the bus tour. And yeah. I was like, okay, here's the bus tour. We're going to spend the summer going city to city, meeting the functional medicine practitioners, talking to people like yourself and getting the word out there that there's a new alternative coming in November at open enrollment. And we want to bring people to our community who not only care about themselves and take personal responsibility, but are ready to take community responsibility, which is really the next step, not only in like health insurance, but in like human evolution. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, and you've been a big pioneer in helping us better understand George Slavic's research at UCLA. Yeah. And guys, I'll put a link to that video right here. Um, I did post that. I think we have like 5,000 views with you sharing about the importance of community. So interwoven into this this model is community. Yeah. And so there's an incentive for, for people to realize that like, uh, I, I, to not ex spend too much money on drugs or medicine or whatever, like health is being reinforced because everyone is sharing kind of the pool of money, right? We want to yeah. bring everyone's cost down. Is that that's part of the model? Yeah. So one of the things that I saw when I joined the Christian ministry is it it kind of shifted your mindset away from well, insurance covers it, so I'm just going to rinse my insurance yeah. for everything that I can, right, to get the most out of it. To hey, I should be responsible for the funds of our community, and you know that's easy to do in a church because you're all in a church and you all know each other but I saw it even happening with Liberty Health Share when you know it was a it was a you know, where, where people were in every state. I saw that just the mindset shifted away from, well, I don't want to burden the rest of my community with these unnecessary costs, mm -hmm. right? Because the number one thing we have to address is that a quarter of all healthcare costs is waste and fraud. Dude, that's 800 
billion dollars with a B. Wow. That's almost a trillion dollars a year waste and fraud. When you say waste, that's like um, doctors are doing unnecessary tests for tort reform. And, yeah, unnecessary, yeah. unnecessary services. You know, waste as far as like, oh, you know, where where do all the expensive things that go? Where do they go? Mm -hmm. What things expire? All of that plus fraud and fraud. If you're paying nine hundred dollars a month, like mm -hmm. you're a you know you're a good man, but there's a lot of other people that are thinking in your position, hey, at nine hundred dollars a month, if I'm paying ten thousand dollars this year, I want to get something from yeah. it. So my wife's going to get the Botox, yeah. right? Or my wife's going to get the you know something, or I'm going to get this, or I'm going to you know. I need an MRI. My elbow hurts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. get take advantage of. Yeah. What I'm thinking. That's an energy that has to happen. Like people feel like that, especially when we have a situation in America where you know incomes are tight and you know the the majority of Americans are not st seeing the wage growth. Yeah. And so it's set up a situation that's been sort of this like perfect storm of waste. And ultimately, what I think is 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 the necessary uh, next step for us is set up structures where people have a community responsibility. And what yeah. do we do in a community? Sure. We take care of people when they have a big problem. Mm -hmm. You know, if they if they get hit by a car, we take care of them. But we also support each other. And where we've seen community-based initiatives mm -hmm. come into America, like the Blue Zone guy, yeah, when he brought Blue Zone ideas to Albert Lee, Minnesota, healthcare costs went down. 40%. Yeah. But who benefited from that? Like Blue Cross Blue Shield Minnesota. Mm -hmm. They were the ones that benefited from that reduction. In our model, the people who actually do the work, the people who start these community initiatives and, you know, support each other to get healthy, they benefit. Yeah. Right? The people doing the work benefit. And ultimately, there's so much about this system that I think has to be part of a collective future where we all work together to reduce healthcare costs and keep each other healthy. That's the plan. Totally. And I I think the power, the onus um, to stay healthy, knowing that your community is depending upon you, like each person is kind of responsible for doing their own work, right? Yeah. Where, whereas in the medical system, like you're saying, it's like at Kaiser, which we pay 900 bucks, and they're, they've been good. Um, there's no real, ins there's no incentive. Like you said, it's like we can just rack up the bill if we want to, because we feel like, well, we're paying into this, we might as well get something out of it. So, yeah, there's yeah. no incentive, but there's also no like community structure. So I'm really excited to create community structures where people can help each other. You know, we've seen things like, you know, community walking groups or community batch cooking classes. Mm -hmm. You know, where people are actually working together to help their neighbor. Like that's powerful, and you know, community initiatives. So, what we feel is that if we just set up the incentive incentives right, yeah. then there'll be innovation within the system. Totally. Right? Let's have me move yeah, over a little bit. I don't have to come, I don't go. have to come up yeah. with all the ideas, right? As soon as we find uh, you know, as soon as we set up the incentives in the right way and you find out, oh, I'm friends with these down these guys down the road and mm -hmm. they all, you know, are in our crew together, let's help each other out. That's let's try cool. and keep each other healthy. That's gotta be James, I love it. I mean this is brilliant. So there'll be like a private Facebook group and we thought about logistics, but yeah. there'll be some way to connect with other people. hundred percent. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna do the private you know, private Facebook group for sure, but also state by state so that people Region. can start to and as it grows, like at the beginning, you know, we're aiming to get ten thousand people in open enrollment this November. But you know, by the end of this presidency, you hope to have like at least a hundred thousand, and then mm. there'll be people in each city, and then we can start to introduce people to each other. And that's really the purpose of the tour. Yeah. Right. I don't need to be on tour to do this, but mm. I chose to come on tour because I feel like when we do an event in Seattle, uh, you know, I'm just saying to these people, hey, look, look around you. The people in this room are probably going to be the center, the center of this community. Yeah. Let's start to introduce people who want to be healthy to each other. I love it, James. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, there's something like innately hardwired in you about community and bringing people together. It's just like a natural skill and, and interest of yours. Where does that yeah, come from? Yeah. So like, I was born in a community, right? Mm -hmm. People probably don't understand from the accent, but I was born in Loveland, Colorado, and I grew up in a community structure. And I just, you know, and I was sort of dragged out of that when my parents divorced, and I just went into like normal life, mm -hmm. I kind of realized that, you know, that things when you know that that was actually a better way of functioning not everyone needs their own lawnmower yeah right you can borrow your neighbors right you, you know we just this it's it's part of the, the fabric of society that is so interwoven in countries with more history it doesn't have the same kind of thing here and I feel like health is the number one thing that everyone cares about and ultimately is the number one thing that affects everyone and there and because the costs are so high and the 
the percentage of wallet share, mm -hmm. right, that's taken up by health premiums is so big. Think yeah. about 900 oh. out of whatever it is. Like that's a significant percentage of wallet share. Yeah. If we can do something about that, we can open up, you know, money for people to be able to spend on themselves and their families and education and any other thing that they're they're looking for. Uh, ultimately, this money is kind of just just going to waste. Well, it's actually going to the shareholders of these you know these companies. And I feel like it's time for a fundamental realignment. And I will say that I'm not the only person because seven percent of Americans mm -hmm. trust their health insurance company. Wow. Seven. Less than the president, less than Congress, less than like you know. I'm not sure, but less than everything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know. So there, there's a there's a desire out there for people to do something different. And the reason I called this new is because I want people to think like this is the new way that it should be done. But also like this comes back to an inner knowing of how it should be. Totally. Right? Community is is interwoven in us, like you said, in our DNA. And uh, this is just a return to that. Right, but it's lost in the 21st century environment where people are eating by themselves. Uh, they're eating healthy food, they're exercising, they're sleeping, but they don't have that sense of community. So this can be a great way to, you know, a lot of people complain like, I would be healthy, but I don't have any healthy friends. Well, with this, this new system, you could be connected with healthy friends in your area. So I love that. So uh, is it newhealth.com? Yeah, newhealth.com. Um, is, uh, is, is stay, where stay. Sorry guys, we had a biker go by and our dogs are right below here. Uh, newhealth.com is, is where to go and, and you can sign up for updates. Newhealth.com slash tour. Mm -hmm. If you want to come and join us on tour, like right now we're in Seattle, but we're on tour until November 1st, which is the first day of open enrollment where it's all going to sort of blow up. So, um, you know, we can offer free I'll put tickets a link. Yeah, your, I'll put a link below this know, video, guys. Your, anyone who's watching, come out, check it out, bring your community. Like if you're going to, if you're friends with a group of people and you have healthy habits already, which I'm sure if you're watching this, maybe you do, you know, let's let's find ways to you know engage that whole community and like come in as a group. Yeah, and then you can start to seed the new community. Totally, it's great. So you're going to the Midwest after California and all that. Yep. Then you're going to East Coast. I mean, yep. you're going you're hitting pretty much every major city, Texas, everything. Yeah, we're going. Yeah. So we, yeah, we'll be uh, middle of the country in August, Midwest in uh, in September, and then South and Texas and back. You know, we're just we're just trying to hit as many places as we can. I'm also like on tour with my family, and so it's being seeing the country and and having the opportunity to meet these groups of practitioners. And ultimately, so far, I mean, we're 15 days into it out of 130, but it's been great. Yeah, yeah, awesome, James. Really Thank appreciate you. you coming on. Yeah, of course. Appreciate you guys watching. I'll put the show notes and links below this video. Definitely sign up, and if you can make one of the tour dates, they're amazing. There's a lot of great speakers too. It's not just you. I mean, you have functional medicine doctors locally that are yeah, speaking. Yeah, you know, part of the goal of this has been to showcase the, the talent that exists in these yeah. different cities. So the show is pretty much the same, but like tomorrow night, we got the godfather of functional medicine, Jeff Bland. We've got two or three other physicians and nurse practitioners who are doing functional medicine locally. And, you know, we'll have a mixture of like, um, you know, celebrities and, you know, health people and local doctors all across the country. It's awesome. Love it, guys. Really appreciate you tuning in. If this uh, message resonates with you, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Follow James on social as well, and definitely go to newhealth.com. Appreciate you tuning in. We'll catch you on another video. Perfect.